Right, so we're here for part two of the question. So I've gone on a lot about Southampton in that uh, in there. Um, is Everton versus Tottenham El Sacchio? Now, Pochettino and Marco Silva have been under a lot of pressure. Marco Silva last night, though, his side won 2-0 against Watford to qualify for the uh, Carabao Cup. I don't really like to call it qualifying in a, in a cup competition. It doesn't sound right to me. But yeah, they went through to the Carabao Cup quarterfinals after beating Watford last night. And Tottenham haven't won away from home since January. They played all right against Liverpool. Um, but um, they lost the game 2-1. Still not picking up results. They won in the Champions League against Red Star. Oh, there's a girl here. Oh, sorry about that. Uh. Um, so as I was saying, um, they won it against Red Star in the Champions League. I said, oh yes, our confidence is back. I mean, in my head, I was kind of like laughing in my head. I'm like, I mean, it, it weren't the Tottenham fans who were saying it, it were the players and the, and the coaching staff. I'm like, how how does a 5 0 win over Red Star? Obviously, it's a win, okay, but it's Red Star Belgrade. I know they beat Liverpool last season, you can say what you want, but they ended up winning the Champions League, Liverpool. Okay, right. But to win 5 0 at home against a team I've barely heard of. And to say, oh yes, our confidence is back. We're back. You know, it's ridiculous. But Everton, I don't think I don't think either manager will be sacked. I think the win last night against uh, Watford has saved Marco Silva in some ways, getting him through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. I think this will be an entertaining game. It was six two to Tottenham last season at Goodison Park. I don't think it will be six uh, two. I will. I'll. Sh I'll tell you my prediction later on. Um, but yeah, I think it will be a fantastic game at Goodison Park on Sunday. I really, really do. Um, so yeah, I don't think it will be El Sacchio. Should Granit Xhaka play for Arsenal ever again? Right. This is an interesting one. Um, do you know what? I think Unai Emery is the problem. I really do. I People have said to me, Oh, Emery out, Emery out, you know, because of the... Results and defensive mistakes are making. I'm like, mm, give him a bit more time. You know, he's taken over Arsene Wenger, a manager that's been there for 22 years. But I think he's been there. I think he's been the reason to their problems, uh, personally. Um, when you look at, um, you know, I think this Özil situation. Özil needs to play. Um, he keeps playing the wrong men in midfield. Uh, Gunduzi and Xhaka. Every time those two start together. They always seem to fall apart, and from what I've heard from Arsenal fans, uh, they need Torreira in there. Xhaka, for me, after Sunday, I don't think he should play for Arsenal again. I don't want to be over dramatic. I've got nothing against Granit Xhaka. I know he's played, scored a couple of goals against Man United in the past, um, and that's won them games and stuff, but I've got nothing against the guy. I think for him, as a player and as a person... And for the club's sake, I think they need to part ways. Um, I think he should be transfer listed in January and go elsewhere because I don't think it is going to work out. He's, if he does come back into the team, he has a lot of making up to do. I don't think the Arsenal fans' reaction was correct. I don't think it was. I think I think it was wrong for them to boo the uh, uh, to boo him. You know, it's one player. I know he's the captain. I know he's supposed to be the lead of the group. But I really, really don't think he should be the captain of Arsenal in the first place. And I don't think he should be at the club after what happened on Sunday. Um, Arsenal fans, please give me your thoughts. And Southampton fans, for part one, please give me your thoughts on what your th club and the state of your club is going to be. Um, so... Um, are Man United back on track? No, we're not back on track yet. We've got Chelsea tonight in the Carabao Cup. Hopefully, I'm hoping we go through, but I think Chelsea will win. I think they'll have too much for us, really. Um, I know, I know that sounds a small club-minded, but yeah, um, we don't really deserve to be there because we were so crap against Rochdale in in the third round. 
and we you know Rochdale should be there not us but we've got to take the opportunity we're lucky to be there uh, take that chance um, because you know we were very very fortunate to go through against Rochdale I remember my rant against Rochdale I was so annoyed after that um, I'm not usually annoyed when we win even on penalties but you know it doesn't matter who it is against but still not good enough but I do think we've got Bournemouth on Saturday um, I think you know you know Bournemouth are a really good team they've struggled to score goals though in the last three games they haven't scored the last goal they did score was against West Ham in a 2-2 draw I think it was Callum Wilson that scored and VAR disallowed a goal of them as well they lost 1-0 to Arsenal then they lost uh, no, then they drew 0-0 nil -nil with Norwich and 0-0 nil -nil with Watford defensively they're really really good Man United, we don't score much goals either. We did get three, though, at Norwich. I was very happy with the performance against Norwich. I've got players coming back, and we looked... And with that 4-3-3, three, three, we, we looked pretty good. And I think Bournemouth can be a threat. But, yeah, I do think we're going to win the game against Bournemouth, but I'll get onto that in a moment. Um, but I think, you know, we've got... I think Bournemouth is a winnable game. We've got Brighton before the international break and I think we've got Sheffield United which will be a very hard game very tough and then we've got I think Aston Villa at home so four games I think we can win let's exclude tonight I don't I don't think we're going to win that it's a cup game irrelevant for me now four games I think we can if we can pick up points I think we, we can we can uh, We'll be back on track um, for the season, you know. And I think for the season, I don't think we're going to get top four. That I think that's um, it's not long gone, but I don't think we'll get it. Um, you know, if we're finishing the top seven for this season, that is probably as far as we can go. I can't see us finishing any higher. I think next season with proper, the you know, we need to spend money, really, really do. See if we can. Add some putting some additions in January. We're heavily linked with Mandzukic. That is a very very good deal for me. I'm very happy with that. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion of it. Right, VAR. Our good old friend VAR. So VAR. How do you do? Right. <laughs> so Southampton against Leicester. There's the Ryan Bertrand decision. VAR made a decision with, that said that Bertrand should be red carded. Um, he did get the red card, of course, because VAR told him to. Uh, told Andre Mariner to send him off. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's a few debatable ones as well at the weekend. Um, if there's any that I've missed out, please let me know. But, what I've got to say is... You know, there was a City second goal against Villa. That's one we need to talk about. That's clearly offside. It's David Silva's goal. It was first ke uh, credited to Kevin De Bruyne. David Silva definitely gets a touch, but Raheem Sterling blocks uh, Tom Heaton's view. So the goal really shouldn't stand. Um, so VAR got that one wrong. Uh, Burnley against Chelsea. I watched that game. Fantastic game of football, I think. Um, weren't much between the two sides, but great goals scored in the game. Pulisic got a hat trick, um, the perfect hat trick, left foot, right foot, and header. And also, two late goals from Burnley, a fantastic finish from Jay Rodriguez, and Dwight McNeil got another one as well later on. But there was one incident where referee Michael Oliver gives a penalty to Chelsea. It looked a penalty. Through at first, I think I would have given it two, but VAR overturned it, and they gave the decision to Burnley, free kick Burnley, and Hudson Odoi got a yellow card. When I looked in the replays, when they were looking at it, I thought he was going to get booked. There was no contact whatsoever from uh, Tarkovsky, but he does. Uh, the, I've looked back at it. I watched um, Blue Blood Fan TV. He, uh, I think that 
sure that's right. If I'm wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. But he fully disagrees that it will. He thinks it was a Stonewall penalty. Well, I don't know about Stonewall, but he says it was a penalty, and he didn't dive. Few people on the stream that were watching it. I thought it was a dive. Two other people thought it was a dive. Um, or one of them said that it weren't a penalty. Uh, but it wasn't a dive either. So I I think it goes down far too easily. Apparently, like, I've looked back, and Matthew Lawton has a hand on him, but that's not enough to send him down. Really isn't. Really isn't enough to send him down. The word, you know, he said he felt a nudge in his back. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I, th I think it was a dive. Hudson Odo, I've got no, nothing against him, but I think it was a dive, and I think VAR did well there. I think that was the only good part of VAR this week. But they do t seem to take a long time with decisions, and that is a repetitive pattern that keeps on uh, keeps on happening. If there's any more other VAR decisions you need me to to say my my view on, uh, please let me know. I'm sure there was another one, but I can't quite remember. I think it was Norwich United. That was one. Right, we're 11 minutes into the video, um, but I'll make it quick. We got two penalties. The first one apparently wasn't a penalty. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says it wasn't a penalty, but we missed. We missed both of them. Um, then the second one, the handball by Cantwell, and then we've got a penalty. Don't come in. And um, and um, we missed that as well. But Krull came off his line twice. The rules, because of the rules, I'm saying why can't why why hasn't he retaken it? But I do feel sorry for goalkeepers because what are they supposed to do? They're not allowed to stand above the line. Um, the, the line's so thin, right? You're not allowed. You're not allowed to stand in front of the line. You're not allowed to stand behind the line. Okay. And it, it, it's hard. I think it's really hard. You've got to come forward, but because of the rules, perhaps you should have had both of them retaken. That's my opinion, anyway. And some United fans have said that to me as well. So, in the Carabao Cup tonight, uh, we have got um, Liverpool v Arsenal and Chelsea United and Aston Villa against Wolves. So, we'll be seeing who goes through. And then the the uh, uh, draw is tomorrow on the BBC Radio Breakfast Show um, on B Radio 2. So, I don't know if I can get to listen to that because I might be still be asleep. It's quite early in the day. And... Last night, City won against Southampton, as I've said. Oxford United are through. They beat Sunderland. Uh, Colchester United beat Crawley Town. Oh, Crawley. Felt sorry for Crawley. And who else went through? Uh, Leicester went through. They beat Burton Albion by three goals to one. So, yeah, guys, that's the topics. We're going to go into the next part of the video, part three. Of my prem predictions and other stuff. I will see you soon.